In today's video, I want to go over the condition variables in the Pthread API, namely the Pthread cond wait, the Pthread cond signal, and the Pthread cond broadcast functions. Now, to better understand this uh, scenario, we're gonna really try to implement something of a gas station where we have someone that's waiting to fill their car with uh, fuel and someone that's actually filling the fuel tank itself. Okay, so. Uh, let's say that the fuel tank is empty and the guy that comes in and wants to fuel his car well has to wait until the fuel tank gets filled okay how how do we do that we're gonna start with just simply two threads one for the guy that's uh, waiting to fuel its car and the other one is gonna be the fueler it's gonna fuel the tank itself so we're gonna have here two routines uh, one of them is going to be here uh, let's say fuel filling and it's not going to take any arguments and the other one is going to be i guess i should also add it even though it's not going to take any i'm going to pass anything there just a null uh and the second one would be the mm, let's say the car that's <laughs> waiting to be filled and those are going to be our two functions i'm going to create i'm going to start creating the two uh threads So here for the pthread create, I'm gonna have basically a for loop that goes from zero to one this time. And we're gonna have a, if it's the last uh, iteration, I'm gonna have this be the fuel filling guy. And if it's the, the first iteration, I'm gonna have the, the car itself. So the car is gonna be created first, basically. And of course we should join them. And now let's also create the fuel itself because the station has a fuel amount. And that fuel amount should be a global variable and say int fuel, I'm gonna initialize it with zero because that makes sense. And since we know it's a global variable and we know that both threads are gonna work with that global variable, it's uh, time to create a mutex as usual. So here we're gonna have to create a mutex if we thread underscore mutex underscore t let's call it just mutex or actually it's not really a good idea to call your mutex mutex because that's just gonna confuse you if you have more than one mutex i'm gonna call it uh let's say mutex fuel and then we know what's all about even though we don't we do have one and i'm gonna initialize it here and destroy it like so all right let's see what we're gonna actually do in here. Of course, if I just uh, printf just filling fuel from this guy and then here to get fuel. If I launch this now, I should get both messages printed on the screen. That's perfectly fine. We have both of these running nicely now how will this work well the idea is we're gonna have a simple for loop with, with the fueling guy this guy is just gonna be int i equals zero and let's say it's gonna fuel like five times so less than five i plus plus and in here it's just gonna increment fuel with uh, an amount let's say 15 this time okay right, now because of course we are modifying fuel here not only modifying, but reading and writing to it, we should use the lock that we have just created. So of course, uh, mutex lock at mutex fuel and unlock it once we're done. And suppose that uh, after the fueler <laughs> actually fueled one time, let's say that uh, he takes a break of like one second and that's gonna be it. Okay, and then in here, in on the car's side, what we have to do is, well, we just have to lock the, the mutex, right? So like we did here, or really everything in here, except that we're not gonna add to this fuel, we're gonna actually subtract an amount, which is 
Uh, let's say 40 because why not? So actually before executing the code, I'm gonna add some printf statement so that we understand what's going on. So filling uh, fuel, let's say percent %d backslash n uh, fuel, like field fuel, more like, because it's already finished. Field fuel there, and let's say here, got fuel, now left is, now left, whatever is in here. Something like that. So now we see the current value every time it's changing. Hope so far you are with me because this is quite a complex um, concept, condition variables, and you're gonna learn it only by using an example here. I cannot just show it to you straight uh, forward. Okay, so if we try to launch this program, you'll see something very interesting happening. You see that, well, we got fuel, but now left is negative 40. So ideally we would like to have a sort of lower limit, right? You, you can't take fuel where there isn't um, any to dig from. So we would like to take fuel only when it's, well, there is something to take from. There's at least this amount inside the tank. How, uh, how can we do that? Now we can simply have a if statement here that says if fuel is higher equal than 40 then of course do uh, decrease the amount of fuel and print something on the screen but if there isn't then you can print something else so print f no fuel backslash n and that's it and as you can see it's all right, it kind of works, but the car didn't get any fuel ever, even though right after it, the, the tank got filled with some fuel, so somebody could actually get and uh, just wait for it. How do we actually wait for the fuel to be there? That is the question, I guess. What we can do is maybe we can do a while loop instead of an if here, right? We can just... Um, just create a while loop, right? We just have a while uh, fuel is less than 40 and say, I don't know, if it's less than 40, let's sleep for one second. Yeah, I guess it can change. So I'm gonna copy this message from here and just say no fuel waiting. Dot, dot, dot. And I'm gonna remove all this and of course when this while loop is um, false, we're gonna actually get the fuel, right? And when this while loop is false, of course, we have more than 40 fuel, or at least 40 fuel. <clears throat> now let's see what happens. I'm gonna say no fuel waiting, and it's gonna say no fuel waiting, and it's gonna keep on doing that forever and ever and ever, never stopping. Why is that? I mean, shouldn't it, you know, fuel? Because we have a fuel filling guy? Not really. Uh, the issue is really with the mutex here. So inside this function, right, we are locking this mutex fuel. So we're saying, okay, well, nobody else that tries to lock this mutex can lock it right now. Okay, so we lock it and then we wait. And then this function comes along and says, okay, well, let me start fueling the station. And it tries to lock, but it can't because it's still not unlocked. This mutex has been used here, so it just waits. And this guy just sleeps forever because the fuel value never changes. And this guy also waits forever because the mutex is never unlocked. While yes, we could unlock and lock it inside the while loop, there is a certain concept inside the Pthread API that can help uh, with this. And that is, you guessed it, the condition variables. So these condition variables are, as they are named, they are certain uh, variables on a certain condition. In our case, the condition is that the fuel is less than 40. 
So how do these uh, condition variables work? First, we can create one. We have to create here a simple variable, pthread cond underscore t, and let's say fuel, or like let's say cond fuel. All right, and this guy has to be initialized like all the other pthread entities. So pthread cond init, that just takes in the uh, fuel, I think it's called cond fuel, yep. And then some attributes as their second parameter that uh, right now we're just gonna leave it uh, at uh, default so we don't have to customize it at all. And then I'm gonna also call pthread cond destroy. And of course, cond viewer. Now, okay, so that's the first step. We have created a condition variable that is out here. Now the condition variable comes with mainly uh, three operations that you can do on it. One is it to wait on the condition. Another one is to broadcast and signal on those waiters. What does that mean? Well, here, instead of uh, sleep, what we can do is simply call pthread cond wait. Cond wait, and we're gonna just give it the condition that cond fuel, and we're also gonna give it the mutex. That is very important. Okay, and this guy is actually going to wait for a signal from another thread that may or may not change the condition. So, in order to trigger this, right now, if we just run the program, what's gonna happen is that we're just gonna see no fuel waiting. Once the gas station is gonna get filled, but nothing else. So now the program is kind of stopped because the second is just waiting, right? This wait is just waiting for signals, doesn't do anything, right? This is what this uh, cond wait does, unless we actually send a signal from somewhere. And that somewhere could be this thread. Okay, so once we're done filling with fuel, we can send a signal saying cond signal cond fuel. And that, that says to all the threads that are um, waiting on this condition, so all the threads that have called wait cond fuel are gonna continue execution. But it's important that you have this in a while loop, the condition itself, see the condition itself is not contained in the condition variable, it's contained in here, in the while loop itself. And it's important to have here a while loop because notice we're only adding 15. So we go from zero to 15 and then if we signal, then the fuel might not be enough, right? So we have to check again. This signal is gonna start this thread and it's gonna be able to possibly um, get fuel and be done. Now, if I try to launch this, you'll notice it's gonna say no fuel for some time and then it's gonna say got fuel, which is very important. All right, let me actually make this bigger. So it says no fuel waiting, right? It got here. And the important part is the fueler filled 15. So it did fill 15 here and then it signaled. It signaled the condition, waking up this thread and making it to check again the condition. It says, okay, well, is this condition false again or true again? It's still true. The fuel is less than 40. Okay, I'm gonna print this on the screen, which you can see here, and I'm gonna wait again. So it's gonna call cond wait a second time, right? And then it's gonna wait for the second signal from the other thread that it did in here. It got to 30 and it's still no good, but at one point it got to 45 and it was good. This was false. And because this was false, it managed to actually uh, subtract 40 fuel from it and print off that and uh, just exit and get done with everything. Even though 
the gas station was still being filled, right? So in the middle of that, you were able to check and get the fuel that you needed, even though it wasn't completely done getting filled. Now this is nice and all, but there are a few very important aspects to understand here um, before going. Peter Cond, Cond weight at least, um, what it does is see you're passing in the Cond variable and the mutex. <clears throat> and this mutex is actually going to be unlocked. So when you call this, it's going to actually call Peter mutex unlock of mutex fuel and it's going to wait. So that's sort of kind of what it does. It just, just calls this <clears throat> and say equivalent to this, then wait for signal on con fuel. And then when it waited, it's going to call Peter mutex lock again. Okay. So that is how when even though we're in the while loop and we have locked the mutex, we were able to fill the gas station. That is how this all uh, was able to work. The con signal didn't do anything with the mutex, it left it as it is. As you can see, we don't even pass this uh, mutex here. <clears throat> it just uh, tells all the waiting threads that called wait on this condition that they could continue. But the wait call does all these three things and it's very important for you to understand this concept. So a quick recap. A condition variable is an identifier for a certain signal that you could either, well, signal or wait on, right? On signaling, you're signaling not that the condition is true, you're just signaling that the condition might, the, the condition's result might have changed. So that, well, you see the first time I signal this, I signal with fuel 15. Of course, this is gonna continue execution, but the condition is not uh, false yet. So we're still in the while loop. Okay, so we, we're gonna continue on doing that until it actually is more than 40. And the weight on condition does unlock the mutex, right? So does call in its implementation, does call the mutex unlock. So another thread could come in and wait for fuel as well without having any issues uh, regarding the mutex lock. Now, of course, don't forget to initialize the condition first. That is very important. I know I just uh, skimmed through this, but it's very important that you initialize both the mutex and the condition variable and you destroy it afterwards. That is not as important, but I just do it. Um, that is about it for this video. Uh, I'm going to actually break it up into two parts because it's already getting quite long. So the second video, I'm going to take a look at that broadcast that I was talking about and a few other uh, concepts regarding condition variables, because as you can see, it's quite a complex um, concept, but I hope you got something out of this video. If you do have any questions, please do leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. The source code you're going to find on the website uh, at the link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.